Every day, thousands of cars drive by what looks like an ordinary parking lot in Decatur. But there is nothing ordinary about this place. Roughly 300 feet from Memorial Drive sits a memorial many don't even know exists. A Civil War era burial site enclosed by 15 feet tall granite walls, a mausoleum. It's seen better days, vandalism and time have taken their toll. How did you come to learn about this place? You know, I'm a big fan of the website Atlas Obscura, and it lists all the curious uh, attractions in the area, so to speak. So I found it on there, and I thought that's at my local Walmart. Yes, this more than 100-year-old final resting place lies next to a Walmart parking lot. Okay. But that's not what captivated Jessica DeRise. It was the name of the mausoleum that caught her attention the Crowley Mausoleum. And I remembered in the back of my head, I had a Crowley far, far back in my line, seven, eight generations back. And I realized, oh my gosh, my ancestors are buried there. What's up you guys? Chet Guthrie the Dream Poet here coming to you all with another fun-filled vlog out here in Decatur, Georgia. And today guys I am standing outside of a Walmart here in Decatur. It's pretty big, pretty nice. Um, for a long time this is where the Avondale Mall used to sit and even prior to that back in the 1820s it was bought up by a man by the name of James N. Crowley. You see, James M. Crowley, he bought 500 acres with the intent on moving his family into this area and creating a life for himself. And that is what he did. For a long time, they lived on these 500 acres until James M. Crowley passed away. And then through the, throughout the ages, the family would inherit the land. One family would get it, then another relative, and then another relative, and so on and so forth. Well, it came to a point in the 1960s when a large portion of this land was sold to create the Avondale Mall. So, construction began. They started moving things. The only issue is the family plot was still on the land. And so construction would continue, and they would continue, and they would continue, until there was really only about 12 feet of the family, or the family cemetery plot left. So, by an agreement, the construction workers, they took the graves, or they took the bodies, and they reinterred them in a mausoleum. And this is the mausoleum. You see, it sits right outside of a Walmart. And this is also known as the cemetery that sits right outside of a Walmart or in a Walmart parking lot. And this thing is very large. On the inside, you see, there are 11 bodies in pine boxes. They are, um, they're, non, they're nondescript. They are, um, oh, how do you put it? They are unmarked, but respectful enough, they're still buried here, safe and not going anywhere. And on the top of this building, there are also two, uh, two headstones, two family members that are given uh, two markers. Now this mausoleum right here, it is very much locked up and it always has been just to keep people from getting in or getting out but there are other vloggers who have seen the top and i figure i would add like a small portion of that uh, from one of my favorite vloggers uh, scott on tape showing what he saw and i'll play that clip that clip right there oh my goodness i was told that this has been locked for years what? 
Oh my god. Well, here we are. Looks like a lot of people have gotten up here. So there's the two headstones. And here, Zachariah Cross, 18, 1815 to 1891, Delaney Cross, 1892 to, well, died 1892, aged 82. Look at this. This is a cemetery. This is a, like, this is, what? I am shocked that I'm up here. Apparently this has been closed off. That that was locked for years. You cannot have access to it, but it's open, wide open. And I don't I do have I think this is in remembrance of everyone here. So one rock on me. I didn't expect to get up. I was just holding it in my pocket. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oh, eleven. Oh, there were twelve. By the way, I hope you like that. Scott on tape is one of my most favorite. Was one of my favorite vloggers. Uh, probably why I like seeing some of the some of the more darker things. He to me kind of looks like uh, kind of looks like Michael Grave. Well, no. Um, Grim Michael from the Grim Life Collective. For a long time, they kind of look like like brothers, or they could pass off as brothers. But uh, let's see what we can see. Obviously, you can tell that there is a lot of graffiti, and people like making this a uh, a canvas, even though it is not a canvas. But you know what? You can't really tell people that, can you? Well, at least they have a no trespassing sign, so at least they have that. Of course, you know, no trespassing. You don't want to, um, you don't want to go in here. It would not be good and it would not end well. But I think for the most part, let's see how far we can go. I'll probably say this is about it. But you know what? That is really cool. Or at least what we can see. That's the important part. And this is pretty sad. This is directly in front of the building. And it looks like construction will not cease. I mean, you think maybe there would be some kind of... Some kind of ethics thing going on to at least, you know, protect the, the graves that are here. I mean, this would drive me nuts. But anyway, I digress. It's like there is a tree growing right up there. That's always fun to see. And it does at least look like they, looks like they try to take care of it. So at least I'll, I'll give them that. I just hate how people have to vandalize stuff. You know, maybe if it wasn't for those kind of people, Maybe we could go inside and see what it's all about. But uh, I kind of doubt that. And really, I would just like to be respectful to the graves that are, that are here. I'd always heard about this one, uh, but I'd never made the, the trek over here to look at it. At first glance, I'll be very surprised if we find any unmarked burials. He's not the only skeptic. When they graded, they may have unwittingly known that they were taking burials with them whenever they would take dirt. Leading Len to believe if anyone was buried outside of the mausoleum, their remains were long gone now. Something only his technology and verify. I'll be able to see those air pockets if they were here. Air pockets, the biggest indicators 
of a grave. As the body decomposes, all it does is it leaves an air pocket. That right there is a tree root from these pine trees. <laughs> it's a root. After roughly an hour, yeah, it's a tree. That's a water pipe right there. That's what a burial looks like. That's what that air pocket looks like. Nope, just a piece of metal. Lens scans revealed nothing more than what you'd expect to find under a parking lot. Until... Well, there's something there. Here's another one. An air pocket. And that's not all. And it looks like it's a wooden casket, and it looks like the wooden casket's intact. That right there? It's flat top. It's linear. It's the length of a child. It's a major shift from the tree roots and pipes he found at the start of the day. But one air pocket is a far cry from 40 to 50 supposed unmarked graves. And I found more stuff, more air pockets, more. So how many have we found so far, air pockets? 10. And you think there's more where that came from? Possible. So anyway. I'll look forward to it. I know it's going to be really, really awesome. So without further ado, you guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Always means a lot. Goes to show that y'all care and that y'all want to see more awesome videos. So without further ado, you guys, this vlog is over.